My name is Chris Smetana. I'm uh, the CEO and the program director for IA Med here. I'm one of the critical care instructors. I'm actually here in Eugene, Oregon, just wrapping up uh, day two of our flight medical provider course. And so uh, thank you very much for all uh, logging in and, and checking out our first uh, webinar and career building session. So this would be career building session number one. Okay. And what we're going to go over to this in this session, in this three minute session is going to be exam preparation and studying. So I'm going to go over, you know, how to read the exam blueprints, how to set yourself up for a good study plan, and some of the podcast links that you guys have access to on the IE Med LMS and in your course dashboard. Uh, the other things we'll talk about are some of the course resources that you can use that are outside. So depending on your exam, we'll talk about the AAOS and the uh, ASNA Transport and Critical Care Principle Guide. Uh, we'll talk about some of the quizzes and how you guys can use our quiz builder feature to help design your quizzes based on your deficiencies so you guys can really hone those in and, and improve on where you're at in your scores on your tests. Uh, we'll review some test taking tips and tricks that we like to share with you. Um, go over our dump sheet, you know, when to take the test, what to do with preparation for it, you know, some of the breaks and just some of the tips and tricks as you guys are actually taking the, the live examination and how you can basically improve your score or your chances. And so we'll kind of go over some of those reviews. Um, I will also kind of touch on how to write a re resume and a CV and how you guys can stand out for those applicants. For those of you who guys may, might be uh, applying for um, an advanced, you know, certification, whether it be, you know, I'm a promotion for, you know, firefighter to engineer or captain, or also more importantly, if you guys are out there looking for a critical care transport job or a career and you guys are looking to get into that field, you know, how to set yourself up uh, for success and how to make sure that your resume stands out so you guys get noticed. And then lastly, we'll talk about just some uh, tips and tricks on how you might be able to improve your salary when you guys are applying for some of these jobs and kind of what employers might be looking for. Um, a little bit of backstory real quick on me. Um, I'm just kind of sharing my background. You know, I, the last couple of years, um, I've been opening air medical bases for uh, one of the air medical companies I do work for uh, part-time. Um, now it's in a part-time status. By the time I was full-time, I was a base manager. I was one of the hiring uh, personnel was it would help out with that education, uh, to help out with that logistics and operations. So, you know, I have experience in interviewing candidates for potential uh, air medical jobs, going through resumes, testing processes, and stuff like that. So, hopefully, I'll be able to share my experience with you today, and we can hit that. So, all right, real quick. So, let's kind of go into it and dive in. So, when you talk about exam preparation and studying, you got to set yourself up for success. You know, if you guys really want to hit this mark, you know, it's what I told my students today, it, you, you put in what you get out, okay, or you get out, I guess what I should say, you get out what you put into it. So you do need to be have some structure, you got to put some time and you're going to have to dedicate some time, set aside some time, some quiet time, and more importantly, so you can have a structured approach. You know, we have found that there's greater success when you formulate a plan and keep to that plan. So, you know, how do you do that? What are you looking for? So the first thing I like to tell my students after our courses or even leading up to the course is start trying to identify your deficiencies. So I talk about using your exam blueprint. So each one of these exams, whether it be the FPC, the CFRN or the CCPC, they have their own exam blueprints that are broken down. It tells you exactly, you know, how many questions you're going to be asked based on which subjects and topics. It'll also break down the subjects and topics that you are going to be tested on. And so this is where we derive a lot of the information for the course and how we set up our content as well. So setting you up for success, the first step to probably understand what you are going to be tested on. So stand by, I'm going to pull up what an exam blueprint looks like. And you can find these in your course resources. So if you go into your course and then you activate it in the sidebar menu down towards the bottom after quiz builder is a uh, little tab that says resources. If you click on that, there's another little tab within that that says files in that file, there's about 22 of them, we share all sorts of resources. You can find your certification exam blueprint in there. Um, for those of you that might be testing for the CEN or CR, uh, CCRN or CTRN, you can also go to the bcen.org website and download those, uh, download those exam blueprints as well. So, so what does an exam blueprint look like? So, you know, going back to, uh, I'm just pulling it up on my screen. Sorry, I got multiple windows open. So, so we'll look at the exam blueprint here. This is the one for the FPC. 
Okay, so we have one for the CCPC, we have one for the CFRN as well. So it just depends on what is it that you are looking to get into. If you're taking the FPC exam, you know, this is what the first page is gonna look like. And this is downloaded directly from the IBSC website. So we'll have a table of contents, you can work through that. You can kind of see some of the guidelines that they put in through, how to schedule an examination, who's eligible, your continuing education hours. So this is a lot of good resources that I don't think a lot of people take advantage of and, and look into a little bit more. But the more important part that I like to point out is look at the topic areas. They break down the questions, number of questions you will be tested on based on topics. So, you know, for trauma and emergency and burns, 19 questions. Uh, safety, transport, and fundamentals, you have 10. Nine for flight physiology. Advanced airway, 15. Neurological, nine. So this is a good understanding and gauge. And when you come to one of our courses, we actually break that down through the lectures. We actually tell you, you know, out of this lecture, you, this is how many questions you can anticipate to see on your exam, your specific exam. Some other things to note out here, you'll notice as it breaks down into a detailed content outline. This is something that I highly recommend our students go through pre-course and post-course to identify the areas of their deficiencies or kind of the areas you want to spend a little bit more time in. And this is how I use, or this is what I use to set myself up for my study plan and how I'm going to attack the exam and study for that test. So, for example, in trauma and burn emergencies, you know, you have to be able to perform patient triage, okay? Differentiate injury patterns associated with specific mechanisms of injury. Understanding the use of the revised trauma score or RTS. So, I would tell my students to go through here and if there's something that just is not, that does not stick to you or is not clear or still muddy, I need to go find more information about it, go through and highlight those subjects. So that way when you start making your study plan, it's a structured approach on how you're gonna approach that study leading up to your exam or testing date. So for example, you know, if I highlight provide care for the patient with, inter, uh, with thoracic cavities, if that's, uh, or thoracic injuries, sorry. Um, if that wasn't something I was up the snap on, I would want to make sure I highlight that. And then on my study plan, the way I approach this for my exams, and I've taken these exams three times, and then the CCPC, so a four total. Um, the way I approach that is, you know, on, you know, maybe it's a five-day lead-up, maybe it's a seven-day lead-up. So I will break those down by subject. So day one might be, hey, I'm gonna review trauma and you know, environmental toxicology, okay? And I'm gonna go through my blueprint and make sure that I hit on those topics, okay? And I'm gonna hit on those topics and review those, whether it be using my, uh, my course resources, my quizzes, my tests, the IA Med Flight Medical Provider Study Guide. Um, depending on your exam, we recommend getting you know, the resources that each of those exams will pull a majority of material from. So for the CFRN example, uh, I would recommend, highly recommend the ASNA Critical Care Transport and Principle Guide. That is kind of the, the gold standard or the Bible, so to speak, that they're gonna grab a lot of these questions for. Obviously, we bring some of that content and incorporate it into uh, our course, you know, based on what you might be tested on. For the paramedics, we look at the AOS Critical Care Transport Guide and Principles by Jones and Bartlett. You know, they're into that second edition now. And so for paramedics, that might be another resource I use to add on, you know, other than the IA Med Flight Medical Provider uh, Study Guide and the other resources we give you within the course. So, you know, I use that detailed guideline to really kind of set myself up and know, hey, is this what I need to kind of go after? You know, th this is how I'm gonna use my things to build out, so that way I know where to focus my energy, and it's more of a conducive and structured approach, so I can review those topics, read about those topics, maybe do a couple of pod, uh, listen to a couple of podcasts, or read a couple of blog articles about that topic, you know, and then go back into doing the quizzes and the tests that we have set up for you in the IA Med LMS, so. Some other things you might want to consider when we talk about uh, looking at your exam blueprint is, is a good study plan. You know, having that good lead up and that good approach leading up to your exam testing date is extremely important. You know, for me, it's always been a five day testing process. You know, I set myself up over five days leading up to my actual testing date. So that way I am literally getting in the weeds. You know, some of these days are, you know, three, four, five hours of studying. What I would wholly recommend is, you know, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, or 40 minutes on, 20 minutes off. Give yourself the, the time to not only uh, absorb that information, that knowledge, and that content, but to give your, 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 yourself a break. Because if we hurt, you know, if you go hard and strong, that's great. But, you know, studies have shown that by cramming, you really don't set yourself up any further than, hey, if you take small little bites of digestible information, process it, compress it, take a break, apply it to something else. 
something else that might be extremely helpful is, hey, maybe I read an article for about 20 minutes or so or, you know, a content or a subject in that book. After that, I move on to a podcast. And then from there, I move on to a quiz. You know, I, so I break it up. I'm not doing just a you know, whole hour of just reading material. So if I'm able to break that up, your brain's gonna process this as a hold on that material a lot better. And you're gonna retain that knowledge and hopefully understand it a lot better and apply it to your exams. Um, the IEMED podcast link. So something I wanna pull up in uh, your IEMED LMS is we're consistently looking at, hey, is there ways that we can improve? So we give you guys a lot of resources in there. I think uh, sometimes people don't are, are not aware that we do have those in there for you and they're available. So we wanna make sure that you guys understand that th those resources are available to you and you guys can take advantage of them at any point in time. And so let me pull that screen up real quick so you can kind of see what I'm looking at and what you would see when you guys get into your course LMS. Okay, so as I get my course LMS, you'll notice this is, this is, this is for the current Oregon course that I'm currently in or teaching. Um, the biggest thing is, is, is remembering that here in that menu tab, I can select this and this blows up my entire sidebar menu, okay? Understand that this course is linear, so you do need to touch every page. Uh, every page. It's not gonna let me to go forward unless I actually go through. This is due to our accreditation standards. And you'll notice that it takes a couple seconds to log into that and register that and allow you to move forward. But some other things I want to pull up and let you understand is like the warm up section. I think a lot of people don't set themselves up for sec uh, success before they get to our course, you know, um, and I'm not sure if it's just not a, a deficiency or uh, they're not reading or coming along with that. But as you continue to move through this, what we will see is we get into the warm up section. And the warm up section is, is another section to help you as a clinician set up yourself for success. Okay, this stuff may not be very clear to you at that time, but if you see this, and as we go through the course and we continue to hit these concepts and we reaffirm the knowledge and the information, we come back to it. And then that allows us to expand, okay? And then allows us to kind of move forward. So in the IEMED L uh, LMS, you go down to the files here under your resources. And this is where we have all the course resources that you can view and download for yourself to add into your study stuff. Um, some big things, here is my candidate handbooks. So like I mentioned, those ones that I just went through. We have our scheduling here so you understand what topics we're teaching on what day. Uh, more importantly, some of the people that forget is we have our course resource links. You can understand these are all good links that we use and we suggest that you go through and review as you guys are either studying, lead up to, or post course. You know, airway management, all this stuff that we, have, we talk about in our course, these are all verified, you know, industry accepted content. You know, they're great, uh, great resources to take advantage of. You know, the ventilator management section, you know, Sal and Flank Reserta with Rebel Yen did a great job on a five part ventilator series. You know, we put this in here to help you guys get additional uh, information and different uh, additional resources to help augment, you know, your, your training, your preparation into this. So. So some other things you can also look at is those resources. So talking about the uh, course resources like we just went through, those are all resources that are available to you that you guys can utilize at any point in time. You guys have access as soon as you guys register for the actual course. So, you know, there is no delay. You have all that available to you right now. So you guys can start incorporating that into your study routine as you lead up to the course, through the course, or after the course. Some other recommendations that we would recommend, uh, if you go into the warm up or the intro section of your LMS, you'll see two different links for different, uh, depending on what exam you're going for, but that AOS Critical Care Transport Guide by Jones and Bartlett, we would recommend, you know, that, that is a good resource to have on file. You will use that throughout your entire career. I saw my first one, I have my second one. I have the Aston Critical Care Transport Principles. I have all as many resources as I can, so that way, you know, my free time, I'm always reading, okay? I always stay up on it. Uh, the other thing I wanna kind of point out is our quiz builder. Um, a lot of people don't understand, but they, we do have this functionality in here called the quiz builder. If you go down here to the bottom here, what we see is you're able to basically take any of our quizzes and you can build your own. I can say, hey, I want to do, uh, do the arterial blood gas followed by pulmonary diseases and general medical. And guess what? I can start my own quiz. That will build it towards me. So as you guys are studying, not only leading up to, but after the course, you guys are able to set these up to help 
augment your study plan. So based on what you guys are shooting for day one, so if I was doing trauma, environmental, and burns, well, guess what? I can select trauma, environmental, and burn quizzes and build that out for me so I can continue to go through that. And that, that is customizable to you. That allows you guys to adapt this system and adapt the quizzes to what your needs are. And understand that all of these quizzes, they are learning quizzes. We have rationales that are associated with them. You will see uh, the material again to help reaffirm that. The questions are similar to what you might run into on your exam. They're not as hard. We always get that question. The quizzes are not. Our tests are very, very similar to what you might run into. The reason being is our quizzes, I want you to learn. We want you to understand that material. We're not trying to stump you or throw you sideways. We want you to be able to digest that and learn through that process. It helps reaffirm and reinforce the knowledge that we are delivering during the course and all the information in the study guide that we lead up to that course. Another thing uh, that we want to kind of hit on uh, for this is kind of looking at <clears throat> you know, our tests. Like I mentioned, the test, the diagnostic test, especially leading up, a lot of students don't do that or they don't think they need to get that done before they come to class. That is actually a requirement to complete the course. So that's 135 questions, okay? You get two and a half hours to take it. It's similar to what you might run into, okay? It's different than our final test because that's gonna test you a little bit in a different area. So that's gonna be a little bit harder. So this is gonna be a baseline. It also provides you with, hey, maybe I need to brush up on some of this material before I get to class or read into it. So that way you guys are getting the most out of this when you guys come into one of our courses or join us online through one of our webinars. Okay, moving on to some test taking tips and tricks. Okay, some things that you guys might uh, take advantage of and something that we like to share during our course um, is our dump sheet. Um, we talk about our dump sheet, and this is just something, all of this information that I'm going to show you right now, it comes directly out of our flight medical provider study guide, okay? It comes right out of the course. This is nothing we're trying to hold back from you. It's just how we came together and put in and simulate that information. I'm not saying that all of this information would be on my dump sheet, okay? That dump sheet is specific to what you need. But I will tell you, like, for example, when I took my test the first time, I wasn't very familiar with lab values. So having this Kim 7 over here on my dump sheet, okay, and if you take these tests nowadays, it's going to be a whiteboard. They're going to give you a whiteboard with a dry erase marker. And on the back, it's going to have a graph. So you guys can write things out, put stuff down, scribble it down as you guys are setting yourself up in that five-minute kind of window period leading up to the start of your actual exam. So you can dump as much of this stuff down, you know, Kim 7, the fishbone, Vent settings, some little adjustment formulas for uh, ABGs and ventilator management. Maybe it's x-ray findings. Maybe it's aviation. When do I want to know what the ELT fires off at? What frequency does it uh, broadcast on? So what is there, the type of hypoxia? Where are the different types of alarms with my ventilator? So that, that whiteboard that they give you, that's, that's free real estate, guys. You guys can take advantage of that and dump some information on there that will help you be successful because two and a half hours into these tests, you know, if you're taking the FPC, you're going to be exhausted by the end of that exam. You know, by one hour in, you are mentally becoming fatigued. And so to have the ability to cross over and quickly reference some, some key material is very, very helpful. You know, be able to go back and a lot of these questions you're going to run into are scenario-based questions. So as you go through this, they're going to look at, hey, what's your sodium? If I can quickly go over and go, hey, this value is out of whack. This is abnormal. That helps my train of thought to go, okay, well, what would cause an abnormal high or low sodium level? And so it starts having you call things out as you guys are reading those questions, especially as you start becoming, you know, mentally fatigued as you kind of progress through the, the tests and the exams. So we do sell this in the IAMED uh, uh, catalog in our marketplace on our IAMED, uh, training at IAMED.us. If you go into the marketplace, it's, it's $9.99. You know, it maybe is a, it's something that you could use to benefit you. If not, like I mentioned, all of this information is in the Flight Medical Provider Study Guide. Okay, it's just how we have simulated it. Some, pipe, some people like a little quick reference guide so they can build their own. Or, you know, go through the quiz, go through the test, go through the material and the study guide and generate and formulate your own as you're, as you're building out that study plan. Okay, what about when to take the test? Okay, so when is the best time for you guys to challenge and take these exams? I will tell you based on 
you're see if you're a morning person, take the test in the morning. If you're a nighttime person, don't take it in the morning. You're going to be exhausted. Your mind is not physiologically synced up for that. Your circadian rhythm is off. So be in line with your circadian rhythm. Ensure that, hey, if I'm a morning person, I'm going to take that test nice, bright and early. 9 a.m. is the first time I want to go take that test. That's, that's me. I'm a morning person. I like that. Uh, it allows me to wake up, be fresh, do a quick little study, get a good meal in me, okay? So I'm feeling at my peak in my prime, and then I go and attack that exam. So, so set yourself up for success. If you do better in the afternoon and you're not really a morning person, it takes you a while to wake up, well, take that test in the afternoon. Don't take it in the morning, okay? So this is based on you. You know, for me, I like taking it in the morning, get a fresh night of sleep. That's very, very important, okay? There's only so much you can study for, okay? At some point, you're just gonna have to commit. And I know that there's never a good time to commit to these exams, right? They can be intimidating for some people. For me, it's just, hey, you're just gonna have to bite the bullet, you know, by setting your date, getting that locked in. Now you can do your study plan, you have your lead up time, and now you can go in and set up and go, hey, I'm gonna take this in the, you know, in the morning or whenever the best testing time is for you. Rest. You guys always want to get as much rest as you possibly can. Don't eat a big breakfast that's carb heavy as you're going to go and take this exam or lunch if you're going to go take it after lunch. So, you know, set yourself up, you know, give high protein meals that are going to sustain you, that are going to last, that are going to provide that mental fuel that you need to challenge yourself because you are going to use that brain power and then brain uses a lot of glucose. So make sure you fuel the beast, so to speak. For me, when I go take these tests, I always bring my water bottle, okay? And I also bring a little cliff bar. And before I walk in, I no kidding, I will pound a five hour energy and get that caffeine going. So that way, hey, my brain's firing on all cylinders. About halfway through the test or about an hour through or so, halfway through my uh, about question number 75 or so, I'll take a break. You know, I'll raise my hand, they'll come in, they'll let you get it up and, and pause your test. Well, not really pause your test, your time continues to go. So understand that. So that's where if you guys are taking our test, okay, those timers that you guys see, that two and a half hour time limit, that is to help you as an individual understand your testing pace, okay? If you go over the two and a half hours with our test, yeah, you can still continue on. But if you do it in real life on these real exams, it's gonna shut it down, okay? And if you haven't answered any of those questions, well, you lose all that, okay? So you'll miss all those questions. So for me, halfway through, I'll go out, I'll stand out, take a quick little drink of water, take a little bite of my cliff Bar, give myself a little momentary mental pause to kind of regather, compress, okay? Go back, sit back down and keep going and finishing out my exam. Uh, make sure you take small little breaks if you can. Even if you just push yourself away from the table and just look the other direction, look around the room, give yourself the opportunity to take these small little breaks so you don't get mentally fatigued, okay? Um, if you don't know the answer, okay, so what are some other tips? So. Hey, I read, I'm reading this question. I don't understand. I, I'm not, I 100% don't know what the answer is. Don't spend three minutes trying to figure out an answer to one question. You don't want to get to the end and go, heck, I spent five minutes on this question, five minutes on this question. I still wasn't sure about it and waste all that precious time towards the end. So when you get towards the end, your time limit, shoot, I got 20 questions to go. And so students will just sit there and answer, 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 quick, 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 and hope for the best. What I would highly recommend is, as you guys are taking these exams, if you don't know the answer to the question, okay, it doesn't come to you, I'm not really sure, okay, read the question, okay, there's a question within the question, hopefully that will, through the process of elimination, eliminate almost two of those choices out, okay, then it's just which one is more correct, okay, if you don't know the answer after 60 seconds, wholeheartedly, you probably want to move on, before you move on, select the best appropriate answer that you think it might be, and then down at the bottom, click mark for review. What that means is, is when I'm finished question number 135 or question 180, depending on what exam I'm taking, CFRN or FPC or CCPC, well, as soon as I finish that last question, it takes me very, all the way back to the very first question I marked for review. And I'll review that. And if I have definitively, keyword here, definitively answered that question, okay, I know it now, I will change my answer. If I don't, okay, I'm still get to that question, I come back to it, I'm like, Ah, I'm not 100% sure, okay, the worst thing you can do is change your answer. That is the number one reason for probably failures in our, in our personal opinion. So if you don't know the answer to something, okay, click the best guess, but don't second guess yourself, okay? If you don't definitively answer that when you come back around, just leave it. Your, your brain is telling you for whatever reason that might be the most appropriate answer, whether it is or not. But statistically, if you change that answer, more than likely you're going to get the answer wrong. So mark it for a review, come back to it, if you have time, and this is where 
you know, time management is very important for these exams. So use our test and use that timer to help guide you and lend you into those. So don't know the answer, select the best thing, mark for review, come back to it later, okay? If you don't know the answer, have to fill the answer to it, leave it alone, okay? Go on to the next one. Did you fill the answer to that one? Move on, okay? Try to be a little bit expedient, but you don't wanna waste three, four, five, six, seven minutes on one question, okay? It's just one question, one point, that's all it is, where you don't wanna miss everything else. And hopefully as you mark it for review and you see some of the other questions, maybe it jogs something so you, when you come back to it, it makes sense and you can definitively answer that. Not like I mentioned, just leave it alone. Don't change that answer, so don't do it. I'm telling you, not a good idea. Okay, so moving on. So how to write a resume and CV and what they should look like, okay? I constantly see people that apply and, and guess what? I get the same Microsoft Word templates over and over and over. Think about as a hiring personnel, if they're on number 60 of their applicants looking at the very same template, what's to set you aside? What's to set you any different than anybody else? I'm not saying they're bad templates, but hey, we wanna get noticed, right? I want someone to, a hiring manager to come across my resume or my CV, my cover letter and go, whoa, okay, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna look at this, okay? There are some tips and tricks you can do. Microsoft Word, if you go online, okay, you can get templates. There's professional services that can help guide and build you a custom built template or resume to help you out. Make it look professional, make it look clean, neat, Okay, that is the key, clean and neat, because guess what? Down dirty, quickness, okay? We're just looking to, for the, hey, does this candidate meet the minimum criteria? That is important. Make sure you guys go and read and understand what is that minimum qualification that that position is asking for? Because trust me, I, I, we get applicants all the time where they go, hey, I, 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 I'm two years, I'm almost there. No, it doesn't meet minimum qualifications. You're not gonna get, you're wasting your time. Not only wasting your time, you're wasting the hiring manager's time, okay? That doesn't reflect good on you in case you wanna reapply in the future, okay? So go back and look at the minimum qualifications. How should a resume look? Well, I'm gonna share you my cover letter and my resume, okay? It's my cover letter and my resume, okay? The thing is also, be professional. Okay, a lot of days in, in this day and age, I don't get a lot of cover letters. You know, that is one of my eliminating criteria. If you didn't take time to submit a cover letter about why you feel like you're the best candidate for this position, you clearly are just throwing in an app and hoping to get a job, possibly. Maybe you are serious, but you just didn't take the time. It shows complacency, it shows laziness. So be professional. Show the person that you really care, that you wanna be a part of that organization. Do some homework. Get to the resources, get online, see what you have available to you, okay? Go out, see if you can seek out a mentor from that agency. See if there's another flight medic or nurse that you can, hey, can you take a little time and share with me your experiences with this company? What are some things that they look for? You know, what are some of the certifications they want? What are some of the training that they're looking for pre-hire? You know, you know, pre you know, what is the hiring process so I can start preparing for that now? Every time I applied for a fire department or a flight job, I always try to get a mentor to help me out because guess what? Who better to help you out than the guy who's currently doing the job right now? So let's go take a look at what my cover letter would look like. Okay, so when you look at a cover letter, you first thing I want to point out is just how crisp and clear this looks, okay? Clear, red, it calls out, it draws attention, right? So if I was a hiring manager coming across this and this is the first thing I saw, boom, guess what? That's gonna draw my attention and I'm gonna pick that up. I wanna look into it a little further, okay? Be clean, be concise, okay? There's different templates, what speaks to you, okay? But Give a story, okay? Why do you think you're the best candidate for this position, okay? This obviously was a long time ago before I took over uh, and, and was co-founder and uh, co-owner of IAMED, but yeah, I, I applied the time to go work for LFN as a clinical director, so. But you'll notice that it is nice, it's clear, it's concise, it lists out a little bit of my experience, why I felt like I was the best candidate for that job, but also it just got all my details and contacts in one spot. It calls out and draws attention, so at least I get a consideration. Okay, versus boring, boring, boring. Okay, you wanna call yourself out. You wanna be noticed, okay? The next thing I'm gonna pull up here is I'm gonna pull up my, uh, my CV or my resume, okay? So you get to see a little bit of that. Once again, I try to keep it clear and concise, okay? It's nice and clean. 
Um, obviously, as you kind of grow professionally, okay, certain positions need a little bit more build out. But my best advice to you is try to keep things nice, clear, and concise, and short. If they need more information, they will ask you for more information. Like I said, as we're going through the CVs and the resumes and the cover letters, they're mainly looking to ensure that you meet the minimum qualifications. And then they want to know a little bit about yourself. Are you going to be a good candidate and a good fit for their organization? Or Maybe not, okay? So once again, bad grammar, bad text, spelling errors, that all reflects not very positive for you, the candidate. So spend time on this. This is something that we're not just gonna throw out. We're gonna spend time and go through this. What's my objective? What's my experience? Okay, what skills do I have? What can I bring to the organization? What, how can I add value to that organization, okay? So those are things to think about, okay? I clearly list out some of the things uh, like my LinkedIn profile or my Twitter handle or my phone number, email, how to get a hold of me, my address. I list out all my certification numbers there on the side. So that way you can go through and hey, okay, he's meeting. They can quickly verify, hey, uh, yep, he got that. He has ACLS, he's got an RP. Okay, they can see that. It's quick and easy to find. I leave numbers on there, you know why? They will, it helps HR out when they go to verify your stuff. It makes it a lot quicker to get through that, that process if you provide them with the information up front. It also goes to show I'm professional, okay? I will also, if needed or if it's warranted, I will submit a copy of my, all my certifications. And I like to send them all in one, one concise PDF, not just here's my ACLS, here's my, those are multiple files. I don't have time for that, okay? The hiring manager wants to see everything up front. So if you can make their life easier, Trust me, they're going to appreciate that, okay? And you're going to hopefully get that, that handshake and hopefully that, that invitation to come out and interview for them. So put all that stuff down, okay? More importantly, make sure you go back and look at what is that minimum qualification. Make sure you have those all listed out and you're meeting those objectives. That is another thing that I find that candidates don't, they don't generally do. They just go, oh, so-and-so's hiring. Cool, I'm going to throw them in an app. They don't look at what does the position entail. So take that time, okay, show that you care. Okay, so how to improve your salary. So how can you guys get the best bang for your buck when you guys are applying, okay? Uh, a couple things that you guys can do, and I'll just be honest straight up and, and up front, okay? The, the candidates that have their advanced certifications as they apply for this position typically get preference. Why? Because the agencies know that these are tough exams. Most of them, are, uh, if your CAMES require, uh, CAMES accredited, they're going to require these certifications within two years. You're going to have to go get, get these certifications within two years. Some programs are even required in one year. I can probably get, uh, guesstimate the trend that the industry is going that eventually, even to be an interview, you're going to have to be certified. Okay, I'm not saying that's the case right now. There's a lot of companies that don't do that, but just that is the trend. That's where the industry kind of is moving towards whether it definitely gets there or not, that depends on the accrediting bodies and the individual companies. So individual companies have their own requirements. There are some companies out there that I am very aware of that, hey, if you don't have an FPC or CFRN for that position, you're probably not gonna get hired or even considered for an interview. So um, when we talk about education, you know, some things that you can set aside, like I said, minimum qualifications, do you meet all those, okay? Do you have a trauma course? Have you taken one? An advanced trauma course, even better, don't, Everybody's got PHDLS. It's a good course, don't get me wrong, but think about like some, you know, advanced transport providers, TNAPC. So those are some advanced courses to set yourself aside. NRP, do you have your NRP? Is it update? Is it current? Because that is a that is usually a requirement of medical services that most candidates do not have when they actually applied. No, uh, no joke. So, you know, if that's a requirement, make sure you have that on hand beforehand. Or if you know that that program does require it, you might want to go out and get it. Maybe your current agency doesn't require that. But this is one of those things that, what have you done to prepare yourself? What sets you aside from the other candidate, okay? And so the more that you can, you can show that, hey, I, I have invested time, I have invested time in myself, my education, my knowledge, and the advancement of myself to get to this next step. Think about uh, additional training. So where can I get some of this additional training? You know, seek out, you know, it, ultrasound courses, you got advanced airway courses, which Rich Levitan or the difficult airway course. So those are also good things that you can take advantage of. Um, if you go to big hospitals in big cities, okay, oftentimes these hospitals, if you reach out to the train department, be like, hey, do you guys have any upcoming train that might be able, or do you have a train schedule? You know, hey, how to interpret an art line waveform, how to set up an art line, how to, some of them have bloom pump courses, OB courses. 
Take advantage of that. Usually that's free training, okay? It may not be a certification course, but I absolutely would list that down, especially as I get to that interview process. So if I'm sitting in front of the order board, hey, what have you done, Chris, to prepare yourself for this career? Well, you know, for example, I went and sought out additional education. So I reached out to a sister hospital and I approached the training coordinator. And I asked if there was, hey, I, I do not have a lot of knowledge in art line management. And so I asked them if they had an art line co uh, course coming up. And I sat in on that and I learned about art lines, how to set up, how to read the tracings, some of the difficulties that you might run into. That shows professionalism. That shows that you want above and beyond. My agency may not require it. When I was a firefighter, absolutely didn't require that stuff. But I tried to go above and beyond to set myself aside, not only for the job, but for my own clinical education and profession and, and, and moving myself forward. So reach out to those local hospitals. Reach out to your local crew members, you know, that are working for that air medical or critical care ground service. Hey, you, what do you guys do? When's your grand rounds? When do you guys do your uh, quarterly meetings, monthly meetings, monthly syncs, whatever it may be? What are some educational opportunities for the outsiders to jump in on? And get in on that. You know, I will tell you as, as, as a flight medical uh, provider myself, you know, if I have crew members come in or people are interested, when I'm on shift, I'll tell them, hey, you're more than welcome to come in and join in and be a part of that shift. Sorry for the alarms going off. This is an active fire station, so they're getting a call right now. But more importantly, you know, set yourself aside. Go out and get that additional training. Okay, that shows that you are motivated, you're dedicated to profess, or not professing, but promoting and getting yourself forward into that career. So those are all things that you guys can do. So looking back, okay, just a little crash course. So exam preparation and study, okay. Look over those exam blueprints. I can't stress that enough. Understand what you're gonna be tested on, okay? We clearly go over it in the course, but you need to do some due diligence. Take it upon yourself, because maybe that's key something up that you're not really prepared for. Have a dialed in study plan, okay? You guys have to have a good study plan so you can prepare yourself. This is not something that you just wanna, hey, maybe I'll study for this day. Be structured in your approach, okay? We all know procrastinators unite tomorrow, okay? Don't be that guy. Be that person or girl, okay, gal, <laughs> and set yourself up, commit yourself, okay? Be a master of your craft, okay? Do not get lazy, don't get complacent. You wanna be successful, you wanna promote yourself, you wanna get ahead, okay? You can, you gotta put in the time, okay? Nobody else is gonna do this for you, okay? We can only lead you to where we have all the information, the resources. You have to put in the time and the dedication to, to advance yourself, okay? Test taking trip, the tips and tricks, okay? If you don't know something, okay? Don't spend a lot of time on that answer or that question. Answer the best of your ability, mark it for review, and move on, okay? Take short breaks if you can. Use good time management, okay? Set yourself up for success. Get a good night's sleep, okay? Prepare, study, get a, you know, early rise up, get some caffeine going, go in there, get a little food in you, take your breaks, bring some water. Don't let yourself get behind, okay? That's the best thing I can probably read up on the CV and the resume, guys. You gotta be professional. Okay, what you guys send over to the hiring manager, that is a reflection of who you are as an individual. Okay, I can pick up a lot based on just reading a CV, how much time and effort someone puts into it or they don't put into it. Grammatical errors, spelling errors, they don't have all the information. They don't send me a complete application. Okay, that tells me you clearly do not care about the position you're going after. The guys that really want these jobs, okay, they really want these positions or want to work for their dream agency, they put the time in, they do their homework, they understand what the agency does, what type of flights they do, what kind of patient populations, the equipment, what their protocol might be, they're involved. So do that, reach out, be involved, okay, get yourself noticed, okay, and then how to improve your salary, guys. The best thing to do, advance your education, advance your career, okay, so obviously, okay, we talk about continued education, educational degrees, okay, paramedics. Okay, look at getting your associates, your, your bachelors, okay? You have BSNs, okay? Nurses provide that. Most of the agencies now are going towards the requirement of a BSN. So, you know, that might be something you need to strive yourself to. So, thank you guys very much. I sincerely appreciate you guys joining along for the first session of the career building. Um, if you guys have any questions, please reach, us, uh, reach out to us via uh, support at imed.us. We'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions you guys might have to make you guys successful on your application process and setting you up for success on your exams, your tests, your study, your knowledge, and more importantly, your future. Okay. Thank you guys very much for joining. My name is Chris Matan with IMED. Stay safe and have a great night.